and um, he's an assistant professor and program chair for ski business and resort management at the uh, Sierra Nevada University in Incline Village. Um, he, uh, the district attorney and I had a conversation for about an hour and a half with him today, um, just answering and asking the right questions and talking about whether this is a viable thing. He was able to rattle off first names of people that are involved in many of these corporations that would be most likely to want to invest and do this. He is coming up on Tuesday. We're gonna give him a tour of the county. We're gonna show him the mountains we have in mind um, and have a discussion with some people that need to be involved. And if all goes well, um, we'll be looking at bringing him on as a consultant uh, for the county to really move forward with this if it looks like it's got viability. Brian, if you had any chance on being here on Tuesday, man, I would. I, since you're the expert on everything that we'll be talking about, man, it'd be really cool if you could be here. I don't think I'm able to make it, but I could give um, Ian a call and let him know some information that I have. And now. Perfect. Perfect. So. Ian, this is very exciting. Thank you so much. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Um, Mother, of course, we do have the final ticket hearing. Mr. Beecher, I believe, will probably have it on the 15th. I didn't pull up my calendar to see the 15th actual date of the week. Final budget hearing? Say, I, I didn't Say that again, answer. Caroline. You were kind of breaking up. Uh, the budget hearing for the April 15th. What day of the week is it? That is a Wednesday. Okay. Uh, would you propose that we have the budget hearing at that time? Yes. Okay, so if everyone can plan on that, okay. we'll have a budget hearing and uh, try and do that at 4 p.m. I just want to thank everyone for all that are doing to keep our uh, economy and our community moving forward to sustain. And I know each and every one of you have a different uh, expertise. And everyone is working hard for this in this current economic condition. So I just want to say thank you so much for all you're doing. And thank you. Uh, I guess right now we'll go to um, Roman numeral four public comment. And we've got George approaching the table. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mayor Madam Chairman, the Nevada Northern Railroad is continually uh, given additional grant money from this board in addition to the 233 to 240,000 or more that they receive in room tax. They are not operating under the Nevada Open Meeting Law and the taxpayer cannot see how the monies are spent. Again, they need to be cut off and held accountable. I remind you that Mr. Bassett manages the railroad and his wife is the bookkeeper. There must not be any nepotism, yet there is. NRS does not allow that. At a previous city council meeting held on September 19, 2019, the railroad was seeking to borrow approximately 450,000, and for what we don't know, <coughs> they have yet to report what their uh, total debt is. I want to know if any member does. The city members should know, and they have the responsibility the responsibility to disclose. Again, I want you, <coughs> I want to ask you, I want to know what the debt is. I don't know if they're still in debt. They had an obligation to be debt free by the end of the year. Here we are, three months later. There are recent rumors uh, out on the public embezzlement, possibly tens of thousands of dollars. We need to clear that up also. Madam Chairman, I missed the last board meeting, but presented a letter to be read into the record. The minutes do not reflect that letter, that the letter was read into the record. My concerns were not properly reflected, and I want that letter in the record, as others have been allowed in the past, and that includes other public bodies. Why are you treating me any different? I go to different meetings, let it be presented, and it's in the minutes, but not on mine. Madam Chairman, uh, <coughs> I left off in regards to the community choir. I want to remind you again, they are not a 501c, or they were not a 501c at the time they applied. They misled you, and you may have had a blind eye. Failure to properly disclose a file under false pretenses is a violation of the law. We all know that. Those people need to clean up their act. They have a problem, and you have a problem. A sign posted on the front of a building stating no soliciting, 
no loitering, no skateboarding, private property. You can't do that, folks. That property is not a public building. <coughs> Madam Chairman, uh, I've asked in the past, and I'm asking again, I have yet to receive any information regarding Mr. Spear, who was a contractor with the Tour de Rec Board. Again, does he have a state business license, a city business license, a commercial location, or a home occupation? I want to remind you again, he took over 300000 in bonus money from this facility alone. Are you telling me that he can't afford to pay business licensing fees? He was a contractor. He was not an employee. He needed to step up and prove that he was properly licensed, and you need to prove that he was. For this board to have justified paying out that outrageous amount of money to that individual. Thank you. Three minutes on Dr. Jeff. I've given you more than that, and I haven't gotten any answers at all. If there is have any more public comment. There is not. Okay. Um, then I'd uh, like to move for adjournment. So moved. And a second, please. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you guys. Have a great night. This has been a Georgetown production. George Chatches reporting.